Hey, hey guys, today we're going to take a look at sales tax. Uh, I'm going to show you three different methods of solving these problems, and my goal is that you walk away from this understanding at least one of them, uh, maybe more, so that you can decide which method works the best for you and which makes the most sense. So uh, take careful notes on all three of the methods as we work, um, and then at the end you'll be able to pick which one makes the most sense for you. Let's talk quickly about what a sales tax is, just to make sure everyone understands that. Uh, a sales tax is a tax that's paid to a governing body for the sales of certain goods and services. Um, and sa sales tax percents vary uh, between states and even within states and county to county, depending on where you are. Um, they range anywhere from like Montana and New Hampshire have 0% sales tax. Uh, Tennessee has the highest right now at like almost 9.5%. So it varies from state to state, um, and it's usually between 0 and 10%. So today you'll see three different methods for solving a particular problem. Okay, One method will be solve using a proportion like we've been doing. A second method will be using an equation. So we have the part equals the percentage times the whole, and then solving uh, using a percent over 100 percent and we'll talk about what that one means when we get there. At this time I'd like you to pause the video and record what you see on the screen at the bottom of your notes page in that big white space. Okay, This is the part over whole proportion that we've been working with but the differences on this one now is that our part is representing our tax or the amount of our tax, the dollar amount and the whole is what we're considering our pre-tax total. So that's how much it cost before the tax was added on. Sometimes it's just called the total. And then over here, our percentage is actually our the percent of sales tax, or the percentage of the tax. And then the 100 stays the same because it's a percent is always representing something out of 100. And then at the end of uh, these problems, this will make more sense when we get there, but you take that pre-tax total, add the tax to it, and then you'll have your total cost. So add this to the bottom of your page before we go on to the next problem. All right, our first example has you using a proportion. So it says you buy a shirt for $20. You pay 6% sales tax. Uh, and we want to know what is the tax and what's the total that you pay. Okay, so we're going to use the proportion uh, that you wrote down on your page. Okay, so the first thing we need to figure out is what is our percentage um, and I see I have 6% sales tax, so I'm putting 6 over 100, because that's 6%. Um, and then we buy the shirt for $20, so that $20 is our pre-tax total. That's our 100% that's our of our sale. So we need to put our X, our unknown, as the amount of the tax. And then I'm going to cross-multiply to solve this one. I have 6 times 20 divided by 100 and I get x equals 1.2. Well, what does that mean when we're talking dollars and cents? Because we don't want to leave it like that. Um, so 1.2 is actually $1.20. We add that trailing zero at the end. Now, is this our sales tax, or is that our total? This is our sales tax. So that's the first question that we were asked, is how much is the tax? Now we just need to say what our total is that we pay. So to figure out our total, we take the amount that it was before tax, so our pre-tax total, this $20, and we're adding our tax to that. So we're adding $1.20 to that. And so we get a total sale amount of $21.20. So that's the first method of solving this problem. All right, we've got the same exact problem again. Here's a different way to solve it that some of you were selecting this week in class. So the second method is using an equation. And so we're going to use this equation here, knowing that the part, which is actually going to be our tax, is equal to the percent written as a decimal times the whole. OK, so this is our total before the tax. Okay, you could add this to the bottom of your page as well um, if you have some space down there. 
Okay, so again, you buy the shirt for $20, so that's our total before tax. We're paying a 6% sales tax, so that's 0 0.06 as a decimal, um, and then we're looking for a tax in our total. So we're going to say our tax is equal to our percent, written as a decimal, times our pre-tax total. So 0 0.06 times 20, and I get x equals 1.2 which now we know is going to be a dollar and twenty cents and again that's our tax and then the step for finding our after-tax total or our total amount is exactly the same as before you take the original amount plus the tax and you get our after-tax total and I'm just gonna make sure that I'm labeling here which is which so we've got our tax and our total All right, our third method is one that's pretty new to people, and some of you might be a little confused by this, but others are going to love this method. Okay, so what I did was I just copied down what we had here from the first method, right, where we set up a proportion. Um, and so if you recall, we set up our proportion to figure out 6% of $20, and that gave us our sales tax. And then to figure out the total we paid, we had to add this original amount plus the tax to get our after-tax total. Okay, so think of this for a second. This $20 that we started with was 100% of our total bill, right? That was That's how much it cost. Plus, this was our 6% sales tax. Well, if we add that together, we get 106% of our original amount. Okay, so stick with me for a second while I show you why that matters. So. Over here, the other way we could have set this up as a percent over 100 is I say, okay, well, if I have a 6% sales tax, I'm paying the 100% of the original amount plus 6% extra. So when I set up my proportion, it's still the percent over 100 and the part over the whole, but my percent that I'm going to use this time is 106% because I'm going to be paying 106% of the total amount, or you don't need the percents on there, I kind of just put them on out of habit. Um, so 100 per six, 106 out of 100, um, and then x over our original amount. Okay, the difference is when I solve this proportion, this x is going to give me the total that I pay, not my tax. Okay, so let's set this up here, 106 times 20 divided by 100, and if I solve this one, I find out that x is 21.2, or $21.20. That's exactly what we had over here for our after-tax total. Okay, so we figured out what 106% is of our original amount, and that gave us our after-tax total. If you were still asked to find the tax, like it was on this one, then you would just take 21.20, minus the original amount and find out that the tax was $1.20. All right, here's our second example. You buy a cheeseburger, fries, and a drink in Minneapolis. The total is $5.99 plus 8.5% tax. How much is the tax? What's your total bill? All right, first method, let's use a proportion. So we've got our total bill of five or our total, which is five ninety nine, or our pre tax total, plus an eight point five percent tax. So we know if it's percent, it's out of a hundred. So we've got our eight point five over a hundred. We're solving for our x. When I do eight point five times five ninety nine divided by a hundred, I get x equals zero point five zero nine one five. Okay, now I have to decide how to round. Right, we need to go to our nearest cent. So we're going to cut it off um, here, whoops, cut it off here between the 0 and the 9. And since this digit is, high, is a 5 or higher, we need to round up. So this is 51 cents for our tax. All right, and then to get our, our total bill, we're adding 51 cents to our original. So 5.99 plus 51, and we get a total of $6.00 and 50 cents. Again, I'm making sure to kind of label it so I can keep track of everything as I go. All right, if you're someone who prefers the equation, 
Uh, you might like this one better. So uh, same problem. We're looking for our tax here, which is our part. Okay, our percent has to be written as a decimal. So we have 8.5%. To turn that into a decimal, remember I moved two places to the left. Fill in a zero where I need it. So my tax is equal to um, 0 0.085 times my whole, which is 599. And I do 0.085 times 599. And I'm going to get that same answer. Here, my tax is equal to uh, 0 0.50915, which is 51 cents. Okay, and then again, to find our total bill, add that together. This step is the same no matter um, which of those two methods you use. So we end up with $6.50 total. All right, here's that newer method where uh, you might choose to use the percent over 100, where we add the tax in first. All right, so if I have 8.5% sale, sales tax, that means my total with my tax is going to be 108.5% of the original bill. So I'm going to do 108.5% over 100% equals X over $5.99 because we're looking for our total bill including the tax, which will be 108.5% of the original. So 108.5 times 599 divided by 100 gives us a grand total here of $6, and it says 6.49915. Again, we want to round to the nearest hundredth. So I'm looking here to the next digit, and I see, yep, it's a 9, so I better round it up. And it becomes $6.50. This is my total amount, you guys, including my tax. So then to figure out just what my tip was, I would take my after-tax total minus uh, my total before my tax, and I will find out that my tip was 51 cents. Okay? So today we've looked at three different ways of solving the same type of problems. Hopefully one of them resonated with you. Um, right now I'd like you to turn your notes page over and you'll see these three problems on there. You can pick any one of those strategies to solve them, but be careful uh, to make sure that you're showing your work and that you're answering the correct question for each of them. I'd also like you to go ahead and put your answers into Edpuzzle so I can see how we're doing with this before you come to class tomorrow. Uh, I will talk with you soon and uh, bring your notes with you, and we will uh, go through any questions that you have. Thanks, guys, for watching. Have a great night.